Jesus Christ. And to Jesus 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 Christ. Jesus. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today in the Gospel and in the Epistle, there were important things said and demonstrated to us. And the first one is that in the Epistle, Apostle Paul tells us that Christ is the end of the law, meaning that he's completed it, that he's fulfilled it, and the end of the law, the fulfillment of the law is righteousness. We wonder how people think that the fulfillment of the law could be punishment. That would be only for the law never having been fulfilled. But our Lord Jesus Christ has fulfilled all righteousness on our behalf. And he appropriates that righteousness to us through faith. As he said, it was a, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness from generation to generation. And again, Phineas stood up in the wilderness and made a speech. And it was accounted to him for righteousness for generation to generation. And our Lord Jesus Christ, having fulfilled all righteousness on the face of this earth, and showed us that the true meaning of righteousness is the co-suffering love which he showed for us on the cross. For the mystery of the cross and the meaning of the cross is the co-suffering love of God for mankind. And this is the message of our salvation. The fulfillment of the law is righteousness and all righteousness is fulfilled in co-suffering love. For the whole mystery of the ministry of Christ the whole mystery of the incarnation of God himself in the flesh and of him being lifted up on the tree and placed in the tomb and rising again is the great co-suffering love of God for mankind with which he embraces all humanity. And in the gospel reading today, the two things that strike me the most are the fact that these lunatics, these madmen, could live amidst the tombs and yet survive. And how could they have ever survived unless the townspeople or the district people had left, taken and left some kind of food for them there? And in another gospel where we hear the same story, we hear that sometimes they bound these men so that they would not go off into the wilderness and perish. And this demonstrates to us that there's an essential goodness in mankind. That mankind is not naturally evil, it is not born evil, but that mankind is born good. And that evil is only a parasite that afflicts mankind. The essential goodness of humanity is to be seen everywhere we turn, even in the face of all the evil that is around us. For if mankind was born essentially evil, then there would be no goodness, no kindness, no compassion on the face of this earth. And we would all be consumed in the evil that's round about us. The second thing is the revelation that is given to us. Why would Christ even condescend to fulfill the wish of the demons and cast them into the herd of swine? The swine herds were there because the Roman soldiers were there. And they could sell the pigs to the Roman soldiers, to the Roman military, in order to feed the troops. But the swine were unclean, according to the law of the Jews. And therefore Christ cast the unclean into the unclean, and cast the demons into the swine. And let us see what value, or what gift the demons gave to the swine once they possessed them. They rushed headlong down the hill, and into the water and drowned. But is it not so that this is exactly what happens to mankind when he gives himself over to the evil one? Greed, avarice, and desire for power all lead people toward Satan. People will sell their souls to the devil for the sake of power or wealth. And this is what the temptation on the mount revealed to us that Christ was 40 days on the mountain afterwards. Satan tempted him with wealth and power. And he refused both. But what happens when one does accept Satan and hoping for wealth and power and other prestigious things? 
he leads us, we become unclean because the unclean has entered us. And with like mindless swine, we rush headlong into the abyss of darkness and are destroyed. And not only that, but destroy others around us. Because power is almost always a destructive thing. Lawful authority can be from God, but power is from the devil. Let us pay attention then to what it says about our own lives. That we acquire righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ who has become our righteousness on the cross. He said that we can see me, our righteousness on the cross. <coughs> our Lord Jesus Christ imparts that righteousness to us because we have no power for righteousness ourselves. It is too great a thing to accomplish. And even when we have unselfish love and strive for greater unselfish love, and when we rise above that and strive for co-suffering love, it comes to us only as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Not that man is incapable of love because we're born to love. But the very meaning of life in this world is to love and be loved. But the gift of that higher form of love which can serve for the healing of another soul, which can serve for the spiritual rebirth of another person, this kind of love comes as a gift of grace through the Holy Spirit of co-suffering love. And it teaches us to preach the gospel with mercy and with compassion, without pathos, without anger, without malice, without condemning any other person. For the gospel should be preached in hope and in expectation. It should never be preached in anger. It should never be preached in condemnation. It should never be preached in malice. But we should when we wish to open the gospel to anyone, first of all, open our hearts to that person and embrace them with our heart. And be always mindful of our own weaknesses and our own failings and our own falls and our own temptations. So that we control ourselves. We see people standing on street corners raving and howling at people. And in essence, they're blaspheming the Holy Spirit and they're cursing the gospel itself because they're so alien to the Holy Spirit and to the gospel which teaches us mercy and compassion which teaches us hope and expectation in the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the unfailing love of our Father God. We know that God loves mankind, that he's the man befriending God. That if Jesus Christ he came down and became truly the friend of man and walked together with us and endured our pains and our sufferings <coughs> and even a death beyond our death so that he might unfold to us the mystery of the great co-suffering love of God for mankind that he might move our hearts and our spirits to turn toward that love as a flower turns toward the light when the sun rises in the morning This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. Let the unclean go into the unclean and let them perish in the river. But let those who have hope and who have faith and who long and desire to acquire that greater love, let the grace of the Holy Spirit descend into their hearts and their beings and illumine them so that they can become truly the light of the world. Amen. Amen.